it's Caroline here from Useful Graphic Design Tutorials and in this video we're going to take you through the basics of the Skype desktop, sorry the, da the Skype dashboard and some of the key features on it. Now we're using Skype, Doreen and I are using Skype to help answer people's queries about their graphic questions as it's much easier we feel to actually show or see what somebody's doing and then troubleshoot that as opposed to trying to describe what's happening in writing. What we have found is that some people don't um, have Skype, uh, perhaps they're a little bit scared about what to do with Skype and so we thought we'd just put this video together. Now we're not showing you how to download it because I'm sure most of you will know how to do that but I have got the Skype um, front screen in front of us and you can find it at skype.com and if you ho hover over the Get Skype you will see all the various um, applications there, Windows, Mac, Linux, so you choose whatever it is that you want on there and download it. So I'll just pause the video now and then come back and we'll actually go through some of the features. We're now on my desktop where I actually have an icon for Skype. So I'm going to double click on that icon and then we'll just take you through. Oh, there we go. Um, that tells me that it's loading up. Okay, so what we're going to do is a quick tour of the dashboard. We're going to go through adding a contact. We're going to check some of the audio settings because if your audio isn't working then nothing really happens. We're going to make a call and then we're actually going to take you through the sharing screen function. And um, as you can see there's a lot of noise going on here and I'll just actually pause this so I can get rid of these. Okay so We've got our main dashboard on the left-hand side here. I say the left-hand side because, again, Skype has had a new upgrade. So I'm personally just getting used to the sort of settings, the new settings from that. And by the way, I should have said that it's version 5.30, which is the latest version that I recommend that you download. So on here, we've got some the, the file function buttons. And if you click on Skype, there's lots of sort of information about privacy, account, um, password, sign in and close. We're not going to go in that at the moment. First of all, we want to look at how to add a contact. So if we go into the contacts tab, you will see that the, the, the top one is adding a contact. So if we click on there, we then get this screen come up. We've got a couple of options here. We could put in the full name of the person and let's use Davina's name. That's Davina Braun. Okay, now, as you see here, Skype is actually searching for this person. And if, you would probably do this if you thought that somebody was on Skype. And so Skype is searching in their database for Davina Braun's name. If we click on the view here, we can see this too. Well, that is Davina. Now, I know that Davina is on Skype. So you would simply click on there and um, you would get, get an invitation to link up with that person. Okay, uh, let's go back here and actually look at the second way of doing this. Okay, so say, for example, you didn't know if the person was on Skype. You'd put the name in there and nothing came up. But you did know their email address. Well, let's put this in. Um, Elspeth Miles, oops, at gmail.com. Okay, now we know Elspeth's email address because we've been emailing with her. We want to see if she's around, so press add. Okay, so there are no matches found from Elspeth actually being on Skype. But what Skype is saying is, well, let's email her and um, ask her if she's on Skype and say, I'd like to add you to my Skype contacts so we can call each other for free. If you have Skype, add me. My Skype name is Caroline J40. And then you'd simply press email. And then Elspeth would get that in her inbox and then she would come to Skype and actually um, connect up with you from that invitation. Okay, so that's how you would contact. You can also import contacts from other social networking sites. And I simply went into contacts and um, import contacts. And here you can go through your contacts on Facebook, Hotmail, Microsoft Office, etc. Simply have to log into the various um, sites and then it will bring all, all your contacts in if you want to do that.
Okay, so the next thing to do is to just check the audio settings. And this feature comes under the call menu. So we click that on that and go down to the audio settings. Now, this is your dashboard, if you like, for audio settings. And the first uh, function is the microphone. I actually have a headset on, but you may just be using the microphone from your computer, your laptop. I can do that, but um, when I'm actually making a video, using the headset actually cuts out all the ambient noise. And you can see if the microphone's working, because of these little green lines here, as I'm talking, those green lines are picking up the noise. Speakers, um, well, Again, um, I've got my headset on, so that's showing up as that. And you may actually have to pop your headphones in and then, well, these days, to be honest, the software is automatically loaded. If you have quite an old system, well, some of this may not actually make sense, but email us and we'll try and help you out there. This is where you actually adjust the volume of the speakers. And um, the ringing, uh, well, there's lots of different sort of settings on there, but I just leave it on ring on all devices. Uh, again, there's a show advanced options, not going to go there for the moment. But one great thing that you can do here, and we will do this, is to make a free test call. And that's the link down here. So I'm going to now make the test call, and you can hear exactly what happens. Let's turn the volume up a little bit. Hello, I'm just testing to see whether or not my microphone works, and everybody would be able to hear me. Okay, so... Okay, so I, I interrupted before the young lady there had finished. So that's quite useful because it actually shows you whether or not you can be heard and other people can hear you. So I do recommend that you do that. Yes, there's some more information about audio equipment, um, such as where you can get a headset down there. But again, we won't go there for the moment. Okay, so we'll come out of that. So we know we're going to be able to call somebody because we've checked the contacts on. We know that they'll be able to hear us because we've actually made a test call. Um, just going here for the moment, general settings. Uh, I can't find them. OK, we'll come back to that anyway. So let's just make a call now. And, well, I'll show you what happens. It, it's as simple as that. On the left-hand side, once you've had your contacts in, they will actually show up here alphabetically. So you can see there's lots of people here. They've got the photograph in, and I do recommend it. It's like lots of things. It sort of personalizes it. There's the um, Echo sound testing service. So let's make a call to Davina. Now, actually, before we do that, let's just show you this. You're able to change your status on Skype so that if somebody comes on, for example, I've got my status here to away. That gives people who come onto Skype a notion that you're there, but you're not taking calls. It's really the Skype etiquette. And if you want to be online and indicate that you're taking calls, then you would probably put it onto online with a green tick. If you're online but you actually don't want to be disturbed, then you probably put it to do not disturb. And then you can also actually indicate that you, uh, well, you want to keep the Skype open, but you want to be invisible or you want to show you're offline. Now, I'm not too sure why you would want to do that um, because, to be honest, I'd probably sign out of Skype. Um, however, those are the available options, and that, that's actually in the drop-down menu next to your name here. Okay, so let's call Davina. Now, I've cheated, really, because I've said to Davina, look, um, I'm going to do this test call with her. Her status suggests that she's away, but she's doing that to indicate to other people not to call. Um, and hopefully she will answer when I make the call to her. So what you need to do is to highlight the person you want to make the call and double click. Another window pops up and you have the option to do um, video calling, which we'll do at another time, I think. You've got various other functions here, but what we want to do first of all is call. So I'm just going to press this button and let's see what happens. Nothing much. Oh, hello. Is that Davina? 
Oh, okay. Well, Davina, we're on um, a call recording this, and um, this is the test to see and show people how we make a call. And so that's worked. We've gone through the audio settings, and that works fine. So can you hear me? Can you hear me quite clearly? Because I've actually got the headset on at the moment. Okay, can you bear with me a moment whilst I actually go through and just show sending a file and the emotions, and then we'll come to sharing the screen. Okay, so uh, whilst Davina is just holding on there, I'm just going to just show you this. Down here is the chat function, so I can also send a little message to Davina and say, Hello, how are you? And you would just simply type that in there. And if you wanted to actually send a little funny face, um, there's a little wave there. There we go. You click on that little funny face there, which shows the menu for emotions. And then I'm just going to press enter. Okay, now that's then gone to Davina um, as chat. So um, that's that. Oh, look, and if, can you see? Now Davina's actually... Um, writing back to me. So that's that writing pencil, which I love, is an indication that the person is responding. So if you see that, you know, oh, somebody's writing you something. It could be something very interesting. <laughs> or it could be something like, can you buy some more coffee or sugar or something really banal? Oh, no, here we go. I'm doing okay, thank you. And there's another little emotion there. What we will do next, because this is really important, is actually show you how to share the screen. Because, as I said initially, when people have a query, this is by far, we think, the easiest way to troubleshoot those queries. So, to share a screen with somebody, you've got to be on the call, first of all. And you go up to the call function on that person's screen, just here, and go down to share screen. Then you get an option to share the full screen, which is what we want to do. OK. Now, it says here, select a window to show people on the call. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll go into... Um, I'm going to move Davina down here a bit. I hope she doesn't mind that. We'll go into the Facebook page and um, just show that. So uh, we have something that we can share the screen on. OK, so... Oops. So now we are telling Skype that this is the page that we actually want to share. And on the top here... We have a button called Show Selected Window, which is what we've got. We're going to click on that. And then this little icon in the middle says the window is now being shared with Davina. So, wow, hey, there's a pretty nice little um, image there I've just spotted. But I just want to check with Davina. Can you see the screen? Okay, so now we can actually um, show her exactly what we're doing. And... What then happens is that I can actually take her through. I can say, OK, the way you edit your page, Davina, if you're stuck on that, is you go over to the Edit button here. You then go down to the profile picture on the left. And then you choose your other file to actually upload. So it's very much easier, we feel, to take people through, well, what are you doing? So we can see what they're doing and then help them um, troubleshoot that. OK, um, Davina, I'm now going to shop stop sharing the screen that's okay and how you do that is simply click on the button at the top here stop sharing and I'm actually now going to end the call with Davina and how do you do that well you simply press the big red telephone here okay so bye for now Davina bye and you'll hear that funny little noise Oink. and that is the uh, the noise for ending the call um, let's just get rid of that for the moment we don't want Davina there. And that's pretty much it. Actually, let's just go back and see. Call, view. I can't, I can't find... Um, isn't it funny? I got used to the old settings. Um, but um, I, I can't find how, how to send a file. But it is there because I did it the other day. OK, I think that's all I'm going to do for now. So just to recap what we've done, we've shown you how to get Skype, although we've let you actually do the out a download yourself, taken a very, very quick tour of some of the key features that is useful for us to actually use, um, and that includes adding a contact, checking the audio settings, making a test call to make sure that your audio works, actually physically making a call, um, showing you how to use the chat function as opposed to speaking, and then 
comment sharing screen so that you can tell us your issues, your problems with any graphics that you may be having. Okay, so we'll end there, I think. And if you have any questions about this or there's something that we haven't covered that you'd like us to cover, then please do get in contact with us. Okay, until next time, goodbye.